how to make basic movement in Unity 2D using the new input system in 6 minutes. We're going to start off by making a very simple scene by adding some boxes into the scene and just setting up a little layout for ourselves. We're going to add a box for the player, change its colour to orange so we know it's the player, rename it to player. We're going to add a box collider to all of our platforms. We're going to add a collider 2D and a rigid body 2D to our player. Turn on continuous collision on the player and freeze Z rotation. So now the player can fall with gravity. I'm also going to change the background color of the camera to something nicer. Now onto importing the new input system. We're going to go into Window, Package Manager. We're going to just type in input. It should have come first for the first result. We're going to import that. Make sure to restart Unity after importing the package, by the way. So now we're going to add the player input component to the player, just like this. And as you see, it will, it will have no asset to, to start off with, so we're going to create a new asset. When that's done, we're going to drag it onto the player, into the asset slot, set the default scheme to keyboard and mouse, and set the behavior to invoke Unity events. We're going to go ahead and open up the asset, and as you can see, there's going to be a lot of default uh, mappings already made, like for example, the, the movement and WASP, but we're going to add a jump mapping, we're going to add a binding for spacebar, and also add another binding for the south button, and this will be for gamepad. I'm going to save the asset and then leave. Now we're going to create a player controller script. I like to use folders, you don't have to. We're going to open this up, and we're going to have a bunch of initialization functions. We're going to get rid of those later. We're going to add using Unity Engine input system. This will basically allow us to reference it in our script. Before we initialize our variables, we're going to make a header. The header will, as the name describes, put a bold heading above a group of variables in the inspector. Now pause. Can anyone watching tell me what I did wrong just there? 5, 4, correct. Public variables are cringe. What I did wrong there is I used a public variable when I really shouldn't have. Variables that should not be changed or accessed by other objects should be kept private, not public, to avoid accidental change and discourage coupling. However, as we want to set the variable in the inspector, we set it as serialized field. This keeps the variable private, but exposes it in the inspector for us. Now we're going to make a header for our player settings variables, and we're going to initialize all of those. We're going to make a float speed, float jumping power, we're going to make another heading for the grounding variables, we're going to make a layer mask for the ground layer, transform for the ground checkpoint, and a standard private float for the horizontal control. We're going to make the move method and use the input action callback context as a parameter. Here we're essentially going to assign to the horizontal variable whether we're moving left or right. We're also going to go ahead and put this inside of a code region. A region is a stylistic coding choice that will allow you to lump together related code and give it a name, so you can then collapse and uncollapse the region to make coding more visually organized. Then in fixed update, which is dedicated to physics, we're going to set the player's rigid body velocity on the x-axis to be the horizontal times speed, which is going to be negative or positive depending on the direction, and we're going to leave the velocity in the y direction as it is. We're going to put that script we just made onto the player object. We're going to set the rigid body reference to our player's rigid body component, and also initialize our variables like speed and jumping power. Now we're going to assign the move method we just made to the move event in player input. Now when we press AD we can move left and right. Now to make jumping, we're going to start off by making a ground check. I'm going to parent that under the player and move it to the very bottom. We're going to add a capsule collider 2D component. I'm going to shape it to how big we want our collision detection zone to be. We will use the values of this capsule collider in our isGrounded function later. We're now going to go ahead and assign the ground check to our player controller's ground check reference. And I'm also going to make a ground layer and assign all the boxes to that ground layer and make a ground layer mask. Now we're going to go ahead and code the isGrounded function with the help from the mock collider values. So we're going to do so we're going to do private ball is grounded and inside we're going to return whether this imaginary capsule collider 2D that we generate just here using the same values as our normal mock collider that we made earlier 
overlaps with any object that is inside the ground layer. Now we're going to make the actual jump method and again use context as a parameter just like we did for move. In this function we're first going to ask if the jump control is performed and if we are grounded. If we are, we're going to set the rigid body's y velocity equal to our jumping power and leave the x velocity as it is. And again we're going to assign our jump method to our jump event in our player input. We're also going to get rid of that mock collider as we don't need it anymore. Now when we press play we can see the player can now jump and move left and right. And also we can tweak the jumping power to make him jump higher or lower. However, remember that these values that you change in play mode will not be saved. There is also one last issue that we have. Hmm. To fix this we're going to go ahead and make a new physics material 2D. And I'm going to set its friction value to zero and assign that physics material to the physics material slot in the player's rigid body component. Now when we play the game again, we can see that the player is no longer sticking to the walls. Very good. And that's pretty much it.